today's task is going to be to integrate the VGA scaler that I've got hooked up to my Wii along with my Dreamcast VGA box here into the entertainment unit and what I'll be doing is mounting these just underneath where the original Xbox sits. You can see I've already got little PCB feet hooked up to those ready to go. So what I'm going to be doing here is pulling the whole entertainment unit forward so I can get access behind the TV. I'll need to move all my games and everything as well. But once I get back there, I'll be able to get everything organized and sorted out. You can see it's not too messy or anything back there right now. It just needs a bit of a... I'll probably need to vacuum it and give it a dust and everything and get things sorted out and a little, a little more organized. You can see I've got my SLG scanline generator here that I'll need to mount properly. But what I'm going to do is throw the camera up onto the tripod and I'll just get to moving this thing forward and getting started. Now that I've brought that forward, I can get nice, easy access behind the TV and I can literally just walk back here, which is very handy. You can see I've got my internet router there and that's hooked up to a separate power supply. But this is the view from behind the TV. And it might look a bit messy, but it's, it's actually quite well organized. I did a video on it in the past, I'll maybe leave a link in the description if you're interested in seeing it in more detail. But there you go. So down here is where I'm going to be mounting those new boards. So underneath this shelf here, and you can maybe see the back of the, that's the back of my Saturn there, that's the, the Dreamcast. So I'll mount it underneath this shelf here, there's lots of space. It shouldn't be too difficult. That's the original Xbox there. And then I'll route the cables up and you can see that's where I've got my SLG at the moment. I'll maybe move that further along here so it's a little out of the way. This is the back of the TV, all the, the inputs there. So you've got your um, your LAN, your PCN, which is your VGA, you've got two HDMIs. This is the the component cable input that got hooked up to my original Xbox. So we've got, we've got a optical output that goes to the uh, the surround sound headset, and that's the input for the the Dreamcast and the Wii audio. Here, these are the SCART inputs. I'll quickly show you these. Some people, a lot of people actually ask what a SCART connector is. So there you go. There's two of them in the back of this TV. It's pretty common uh, thing in the UK. So that first one there is a, an RGB SCART and the one next to it I believe is just a, a regular um, component, or composite, sorry. You can see that there, maybe they're both RGB SCART. Need to check that out. But anyway, I have everything plugged in through this one here, the RGB SCART cable. So all the, the retro systems get plugged in through that there. I've got switcher here and switcher here and around here you've got your your regular composite which I don't use and then there's two HDMI inputs and a, a USB as well and a secret door I don't actually know what's behind that I never checked. So what I'm gonna do is find a good spot to mount those boards and get started. Fast forward a couple of hours and I'm pretty much done mounting those boards to the underside of the, the shelf here and I'll give you a quick look at them. Quite tricky to get the camera down here, but I'll do my best. So you can just see the, the scalar board at the front there. And just behind it, at the back, you've got the, the Dreamcast VGA box as well. And those feet were really tricky to, to mount in there because I just couldn't get my hand under there with the screwdriver to get a, a good angle at them, but managed it in the end. So here you've got the, the VGA cable coming out of the scalar just here and you've got the, uh, the component cables for the, the Wii going in the other end and I'm still gonna have to switch this over to the, the Dreamcast box when I want to use the Dreamcast I could use a, a VGA switch box I've got one of those but it's just I wanted to keep it a bit more kind of simple and, uh, instead of having an extra thing in here with another power cable and everything I thought well it's easy enough just to manually switch that cable over when I want to play the, the Dreamcast so I just left it as it is and for the power, for the VGA scaler, what I did is I actually just went and spliced into the, uh, the power supply, that modded power supply I have for my Dream, uh, Dreamcast, 
Mega Drive tower there. It's got more than enough power to, to power the, the scaler, so I thought, well, instead of bringing out another power supply and picking it in here and then inviting it in, might as well just use the one that's already there. So what I did is I took this uh, this box apart here and just spliced in a, a new uh, cable, that's it there. And then that's just routed under here and into the scaler. You can just, probably just make that out there. It's actually taped to the underside of the shell. So it just makes it a little uh, less cluttered under there. And up here, I tidied this all up as well. Um, just gave it a good clean and rerouted some of these cables. But you can see I've got the SLG mounted at the, the back of the television there. And this is the, the BGA cable coming up from the, the scaler. It comes up around here and I just used some cable ties to hold that in place at the back of the TV. And that's the, the SLG. So I can quite easily get in behind the TV to adjust the, the scan lines and switch it on and off. So now, the last thing to do is get this all pushed back against the wall and we'll test that out. That's everything back to where it should be. Got all my consoles hooked up and ready to go. I've got my games back up against the wall there. And if I come in a bit closer, you'll be able to see the scan lines in effect. Looking all nice. Sorry about the glare. It's a bit sunny outside. But if I want to turn them off, really easily, I can just reach back here, turn them on and off like that. So that's them off, that's them on. And I can also adjust the intensity with this little dial that's on the side here. And as you can see, or as you now can't see, there's no more scaler on the floor, there's no more DC VGA box, no more wires kicking about all over the place. And just bring it down a bit closer here. First of all, we'll be able to see my nice high-tech broom handle. It supports the weight of the Xbox One there, above it. But back there, you can see the DC GA box and the scaler. All the wires are nice, nicely supported up above. They're not getting in the way of anything. So if I want to open my Dreamcast, I can. There's nothing restricting it. Same with the, the Saturn there. Everything's nice and tidy away and you can't see any of it from the, the front of the system, which is pretty much exactly what I wanted. But I suppose what I'll do now is give you some quick examples of the, the scan lines. The first title I'll show you here is a GameCube game and it's Mario Kart Double Dash. And because this console is a backwards compatible unit, the main advantage of that is being able to play your GameCube games over the component cables and obviously now I've got the, the scaler and the scanline generator it adds a, a really nice boost to the, the overall visuals. Here's the main title screen and if I get a bit closer you'll be able to quite clearly see the scan lines in the text. You can see it there in the, the start. And move on to Mario and Luigi. And you can really see it in the, the main title text there as well closer to that. It probably doesn't come across on camera too well but in real life it looks very very nice and it adds a nice visual enhancement to the, the image quality overall. The next title I've got here is a Wii game and it's A Boy and His Blob which is a 2D puzzle platformer by WayForward and this is another one that really benefits from the, the SLG and the scaler. Obviously you're not always sitting two inches away from the screen and the further away you get from it, the less noticeable they are. But overall, it still gives the same effect of cleaning up and sharpening up the, the image. If I move in again, you'll be able to, to see them there. And the colours are very vibrant. And everything just looks very nice. Another one of the big advantages of using the Wii is the fact it's got so much homebrew available for it and that obviously means emulators and at the moment I'm running the Mega Drive emulator and if I get a bit closer here you'll be able to see Punk's man and all the, the scan lines that are running through him the big improvement that it makes same with the, the backgrounds and yeah just overall a big improvement heads up display there and this works with the Game Boy Advance and the Super Nintendo and all the other emulators as well. It's actually really surprised at how well it works with the, the GBA. But yeah, overall, very impressed. So that's everything all hooked up now. I've got the scaler connected to the Wii and the SLG, and it looks great. 
got some double dash just playing there. Very vibrant and crisp looking. It looks pretty much as good as a, a Wii game. And that's the same for most of the GameCube games when you hook them up through the component cables and the, the scaler. There you go. So, thanks for watching and I'll catch you again soon. Scanlines.